and we're back. With some more oxygen not included. Now, I did a little bit of work on the side. Namely, I, I cleared out the oil biome. Well, we wanted all of this, the uh, fossil that was down there. And all of that fossil needs to be turned into steel. So we basically just strip mined out everything. I'll, I'll have a little time skip of that in a minute. But uh, we also, yeah, we tapped into this volcano down here. This volcano in here is already tapped into. Uh, we've also got a copper volcano up here that we tapped into a while back, and then we chucked in a couple of metal volcano tamers. I just hooked up thermal aqua tuners. I said, you know what, we we'll save the space. I was going to try and wire both of them together in a passive cooling station. I'm like, no, it takes too much space. Instead, wired up to the main grid. Uh, this thing, any power they generate is actually fed back onto our grid, so it's a net power positive. Right now, though, we're still waiting on a whole bunch of science, and I'm thinking we're going to have to go and generate a whole bunch of rads to really speed this along. Oh, and uh, we brought a rocket back for a minute to pull back some of those data banks. We got 999 data banks in storage, and we sent our duplicate back up to finish off the last one. They've got about, well, they started with about nine tons of plastic, they're down to about three tons. So once they've processed three more tons of plastic into data banks, they'll have got all the data banks we need, and we can rip this whole thing out. All right. But there is one thing I would like to do in the meantime. It's a question that has always come up again and again and again. Uh, why don't I just melt the sides of the capsule? It's like I, I d avoided doing that in all the previous playthroughs because it's kind of, well, it's a huge advantage. Being able to melt out the sides of the capsule just uh, kind of removes a lot of the strain of working with this. I'd like to show you just how stupidly overpowered you can do some stuff. First off, let's make ourselves a nice little space. I think down here is where I'd like to put it. We may have added a few more active members to the team. Their training is complete, though there's two more to go, and then we're going to have a quick naming ceremony for the lot of them, and a quick go over of their stats and why we pick them. What we're going to do here is, we're going to build a solar power plant indoors and downstairs. Um, we're going to build one right here, actually. That might be a little bit too close to the edge. Let's move it a little bit further away from our transport corridor. So we're going to start building a rocket. Well, I should probably point out how we did this. We first put down the rocket engine, which was the carbon dioxide one, but then... We just sort of cancelled the build of it. Well, we stuck down the rocket engine, we sticked in the spacefarer module on top of it, then we cancelled the build of the rocket engine, and then we add on a battery. I mean, this is going to be a solar power thingy, so yeah, let's build one right there. Doesn't even have any heat requirements. You. There, perfect. Now we just gotta put up some ladders to it. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. We'll figure out how to get someone in there. And more importantly, we need to go inside here and start prepping for demolition of the outer walls. Now, used to be you could do things like get dupes, stress them out, and get them to punch their way through the walls, I believe, but we're just going to go with the old-fashioned, let's melt this sucker down and gain access to the outside box. Uh, this might take a minute, though. Hmm. You see, what we want to do is melt this wall. Wall's made out of steel, though, so that's going to require a little bit of temperature. About 2,426, well... Two degrees beyond that, so about 28.9 degrees. Once we hit that, this wall should melt and we should get access to this outer area out here. It's a little bit radiated, but 250 rads. Okay, it's a little bit more than a little bit radiated. Wow. All right. But what we want to do here is make ourselves some liquid steel. Now, making liquid steel, there's multiple ways to do it. Some people like to use magma to work their way up to steel and uh, there's all sorts of things. What we're going to do instead is we're going to melt some steel, steel kilns. See, kilns are great because they generate heat when they operate. Oh my god, you guys have already trapped yourselves. Uh, just uh, deconstruct that mesh tile, and you can get out of there. There you go. Perfect. Then I'm going to need you to... Mm, you can... Maybe sweep that up? Actually, priority. I want them to try and use that copper. No? No one's going to use that copper? I can't have that copper left there. You bring a different piece... Oh, you brought a different piece of copper. I hate you. Fine. I'll have you sweep. Then you can go... Finish that off. A slight change in plan. I could see some uh, problems with the method I was about to choose. Namely, we were going to drop liquid steel in here, and then we need some way of getting the steel out without anything else falling on top of it, and we were going to have to deconstruct things and plate, place pumps. We need to be prepped to immediately pump this, the liquid steel out of this section here without actually deconstructing anything above it, because if we do, stuff will fall down and, you know, the steel will then solidify and we'll have wasted all of our time melting steel. So this thing up here needs to be... Actually, let's do ceramic. We have plenty of clay, we have plenty of coal. Let's just do that forever. That will start heating this thing up, and it can't shed temperature because it's completely in a vacuum in here. There's just... There's no gases. Uh, give me gas overlay. And nothing. So once that melts, it'll just drop down here and land inside these airflow tiles. 
since the airflow tiles are in a vacuum, can't exchange heat with them, therefore we can pump it out. Uh, now, we're gonna need something to trigger the pump action. Oh, one second. After a little bit of fiddling around, what we have here is an auto sweeper that can reach both coal and clay, and it's filling this kiln up. And this kiln is slowly, slowly, slowly getting hotter. It's at 150C. Once it hits 2400, it'll melt. So this is gonna take a while, but hey, we're, we're trying to get our hands on ceramic here, and we're gonna need that ceramic eventually, so we might as well make the ceramic in here as anywhere else and get ourselves some molten steel while we're doing it. Over here, we're also filling up these segments so we can put the kiln in there too. The thing is though, once this steel melts, we need some way of getting that steel into a metal refinery. See, oh god, it's been a while since I've done a metal refinery with liquid steel. I think it was when I was trying to melt gravitas buildings back before they introduced the ability to deconstruct gravitas buildings. But this thing here takes, uh, see, it's got petroleum in it. Uh, where are we? Yeah, there's 400 kilos of petroleum in there. What we want to do is get 400 kilos of molten steel and stick it into a metal refinery. Then every time we use that molten steel, we can dump more heat into it, and we can use that molten steel to melt other steel. Yeah, uh, you know what, it'll all become clearer as we go. However, to pump steel, you can't just stick a liquid pump in it. Problem is, liquid pump will overheat. What we want to do is trick it into pumping, so we're going to need to use a little bit of naphtha, which we've actually got. Where's our naphtha? Yep, down here. You, uh, you need to start pumping in there. Let's see what we got. We got eight kilos of naphtha, uh, eight kilos behind that, or is it six? Whatever. And there we go. We got, yeah, 8 and 10. So we got 18 kilos of naphtha. That's going to flow in here. Come on. And it's going to drop down in this section right here. And where'd it go? Yeah, exit. It is right there. And I have this the wrong way. Oops. You want to put an automation wire from there to there. Now, the point of this is this is going to figure out when there's naphtha here. Tell the pump to, well, and tell that liquid vent to open up. That liquid vent will then dump the naphtha right back down on this tile. And we'll see it in action in there in a moment. Oh, yep, we got the automation sorted. All right, just like those gas vents we use to filter out uh, oxygen like we're doing in our other capsule, say in this one. This thing here is set so that if there's any oxygen passing through here, it opens the vent so that the oxygen can escape back into the capsule. And it just lets out all the other gases. By that exact same logic, we're doing the same thing here, but with naphtha. This thing here goes, if there's ever naphtha in the pipe, I want you to drop it out that vent, which it does. And it just drops it down there, right back where it was. So this thing can go forever and ever and ever. And uh, we will disable that building for now. We don't want it running. In fact, we can just turn off the power. That might be simpler. There we go. Perfect. Keep, keep the building enabled. Right. That means all of the liquid should be right there. Yeah, we got 12 kilos. I feel like there should have been more. Eh. We'll worry about that when the time comes. For now, what we got to do is wait until this thing produces. Uh, well, produces enough heat to melt itself. That's going to take a while. I think once it hits about a thousand degrees, I'll start the second one up. It's just for now, what I want to do is pump that into this liquid tank. Then I'm going to put that reservoir over here, move everything into the other reservoir, and then we're going to melt this one down here and pump all the stuff from that into the reservoir. And then we'll have 400 kilos of steel. Since they're all on airflow tiles, no heat exchange, no worry about loss of temperature. Uh, in theory. Let's see how it works out, though. I've never tried melting steel inside one of these capsules before. While we're waiting for all that to go, I'll do a quick... I'll show you the quick time-lapse of uh, all the stuff we cored out down here. We basically just ripped out everything because we wanted the fossil. And now we have about 80 tons of fossil that we're turning into lime to make even more steel. We didn't really need to expand the water tank, but it feels wrong to sort of waste the water. A little bit more storage space can't hurt. Eh, uh, in fact, we should probably expand the water tank for this as well, because this one's over capacity, but... Yeah, I'm not sure there's a lot of good space around here. I suppose we could chop out this section. Well, first, uh, yeah, let's have a quick check up in here and we'll notice... Uh, this is slow. We're up to 740 degrees. Uh, you know what? Let's just start this one up as well. We might as well. It's going to be a long time before this is ready, and once it melts, we're going to want to jump on that pretty quick. So I'll keep an eye on that, but there is a couple of side projects we can take care of while we're waiting. Uh, namely, for water storage. We, we could just, like, cut across here, turn this place into a giant water tank. I mean, why break the habit of a lifetime?
And that is our second water expansion complete. Perfect. Now, a couple of things I should probably cover. People keep warning me about this gap in my base where the oxygen is escaping. That's sort of... Okay, we're pumping oxygen out of the base as it is. Right? I'm, I like pressurizing the outside area with oxygen. It just means we don't have to put in those liquid locks. Um, so, yeah, we don't really care about oxygen escaping. But it's more a case of we don't want our animals stifling. For example, these poke shells right here are... Yeah, they're, they're quite happily living, living in there. But if we close up this tile right here, the problem is there's not enough space for them to exist. Or there's not enough space for them to breed. They don't want to drop an egg. They'll be cramped. So we don't leave this open. Oh my god, seriously? Someone want to finish that? There we go. You'll see now they're overcrowded. Uh, since they're all overcrowded, they won't reproduce and they will all die. So we're leaving that gap there so that there's all of this excess room space for them to tap into that allows them to be able to breed and, well, breed. Yeah, there needs to be an egg dropped. Same with these over here. This is where we're storing all our wild critters. Anything that pops out of the gates or anything we find around the map, we dump there. And we leave the gap right there so that it's a giant room so that they don't overcrowd and they won't reproduce anymore. I've had this happen before where you accidentally put them in too small an area and then they just don't lay eggs. The next thing you look back, it's like, oh, what happened to my wild supply of critters? They're all dead now and there's no way to get them back. You know, you don't really care if you lose your domesticated ones so long as you have some wild backups that you can train up because, you know, you can multiply those quite quickly, but you can never multiply the uh, the wild ones. They're either wild or they're tame. There's no, there's no retaming something or rewilding something once it's gone tame. Now, uh, I think we need more ra rads coming in. Because this radbolt generator is not cranking out the research for radbolt propulsion quite as fast as I would like. We need 70, we need 90, oh, 90 more applied research points. I'm thinking we're going to throw power at this problem. First thing we're going to do, we're going to throw on a large power transformer right here. We're going to pull off two kilowatts of power and we're just going to throw two kilowatts of power at this until we have more than enough rads to fill these as quickly and efficiently as possible. And someone want to start researching there, guys? Uh, one minute while we figure out how to cram in a bunch of this. This looks like it might work. Uh, let's try doing that and we'll set the priority here of everything to one. Keep it super low, that way no one should come along to try and fill this up. Okay, and the game chooses this exact moment to save. Rads wise, what are we looking at? That's getting 1800, that's getting 1800. Yep, it's... Okay, it's faster. It could be better, but you know what? I am going to live with it. How is the rads looking in here? Ooh, it's a little, it's a little radiated. Just, just a scooch. Well, uh, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll put in a little, oh, actually, wait, no, we can't put in too much there. Uh, we need that to be able to reach there. Ooh, a few rads, all right. Jeez, they'll be fine. Dupes are very hardy. They can they can withstand large quantities of radiation. Except maybe just don't don't be standing there just like right this minute. It's 245 rads there, guys. Come on, there you go. Much better. That that's provided them quite a bit of insulation, and you can still reach that case, can you? Yes, you can. Perfect. So that should provide us the necessary rads to hopefully knock out the rad bull propulsion. Once that is done, I'm thinking. Ooh, I should probably get petroleum as well while we're at it. We, we are intending on making a petroleum boiler. I don't know why. Oh, and in here we're up to 1300 degrees. Wow. I don't think that it's... This is slow, I know that, but it's not that slow. It's just a case of our duplicates are that fast. They are literally churning through all the problems on the map. I think we'll have a quick stop to the space biome and start uh, ripping out the last of this while we're waiting. In fact, we're pretty close right about now. There's, what, 1700 degrees? Uh, all we need to hit is about 2400, so we're getting there. Uh, we can we can take care of this biome. Plus, I want to get the uh, ah the shovels that are in here. Those shovels need to have their eggs moved down to the a more stable storage location. That's every single scrap gone out of here, and all of the shovels have now been successfully moved down here. Eh, took a little bit. Of, we had to deconstruct the auto sweeper, put in a little animal drop off, but we got them all down. That's it. They're done. They're finished. They're all successfully and safely put away. Oh, and how are we looking on the energy front? 200 and... Ooh, 2200 degrees. Right, I'm going to queue up a, a few dig commands over here to get rid of this, but I'm thinking we're going straight towards melted steel in a moment. So here we were, happily digging this out, and I realized that our rocket needed to return home. Namely because they've processed all the plastic. We have all of the data banks done. That's excellent. However, landing turned out to be a little bit more awkward than anticipated because it's now blocked by dirt. So even though we opened the door, that dirt is going to cause us issues. Um, 
yeah, this is going to make things interesting. So let's put down a few ladder segments there, dig that out, and immediately land our rocket. That is... Hmm... I've also been advised that when it comes to things like uh, robo-miners, robo-miners can't mine through, um, ah, bunker doors. So you can't mine through bunker doors, which means you can't stop dirt meteors. Otherwise, you can't actually destroy the dirt afterwards with a miner. Your miner will just, well, as you can see here, it can't get through the, the robo-doors. So, ah, uh, does that mean we have to use regular doors or that's going to be super annoying. Yeah, we'll have to figure something out. But uh, for now, this is almost done, and... Oh, you're almost at 2300 degrees. We are so close to melted steel. I do feel like the team has definitely improved. All of that training, and all of that digging stuff up, and just having so many more duplicates. Oh, this makes this so much faster. I remember the first time we tried this, it was taking forever to get anywhere. Okay, that's done. I think our rocket is just about ready to start producing steel. Are you? 2360. Oh, we are so close. We are so close. Here it comes. All right, we're at uh, 2416 of 2400 and... Oh, we need to go about 26, 27, 28, say 29 degrees. Once we hit about 29 degrees, the whole thing should just melt. All right, is that enough? Uh, you know what? We're going to turn this guy off for a moment. We don't want that guy getting interfering. Like, someone might... Ah! It happened. It dropped. The steel has, has literally... You can't really see it because of the airflow tiles, but there we go. Oh. Ceramic. Uh, yes, we're gonna need ceramic. Uh, you're hooked up, you're hooked up, you're hooked up. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, power. Heavy what wire. That's steel. Oh, yeah. So the way this works is this liquid pump can sense the liquid here, so it's going to try and pump. But it's also going to pull liquid from this tile here. So it's basically a cross-section. This set tile, this tile, this tile, one tile above it, and one tile to the right of it. So once that pumps, though, it's going to start taking both. Guys, get out of the frickin' steel. That's why I turned off the other thing. I didn't want them running in and out of here, carrying resources to that thing. Uh, and there we go. Steel is making its way in. So all the steel gets liquid steel gets dumped into the tank, and all of the naphtha gets chopped down right back down to the tile to trigger the liquid pump some more so we can pump more steel. Why? Why are you coming in here? Go away! Seriously, it's, this happened last time as well. They keep coming in and out going, oh yeah, let's just walk through here. Let's walk through that liquid steel because we totally want to suck all the heat out of it. Yeah, so all the steel's in here. It's at 1723. Okay, so it lost a little bit of heat along the way. But that's fine, that's fine. So now what we want to do is disable this pump. We don't want that pumping anymore. See, the problem is we have to move this whole setup one tile to the left, uh, which means more duplicates are going to come in here and stand on stuff, aren't they? It's fine. It's fine. Uh, then we're going to need to get that pipe extended over... There? Oh, wait. How are we going to do this? See, we need to move that naphtha over one tile. Um, this might take a second. Okay, I think I got this. I think I got this. We've got uh, the blob of liquid right here. And what we're going to do is we just want to move it one tile to the left, so we're just going to pump it. Heavy watt wire. That should pump the whole thing just one tile over. Yeah. That That's enough of that. Stop rotating it around, Francis. Stop being a moron. Uh, yeah, give me a snips here for a second. Snip that down. Perfect. Now we've got that blob of liquid right there, and we simply just have to deconstruct the pump, move it one tile to the left, and repeat this whole thing again. Oh, okay. Should be fairly handy. Should be fairly handy. And we're all set up again. Perfect. Uh, pump it. And excellent. We've got all the liquid steel. That should be the last of it. Come on. Seven. Yep. Finished. We've successfully managed to take all of it. Oh. In that case, we can now deconstruct this site. Uh, once we've deconstructed it as well, what we want to do is, well, transfer all of that steel over here so that we can melt this thing. Uh, this thing can actually... You can keep going again. Uh, give me a minute to clean this mess up. Then we put that pipe right there, and that should get all the steel moving. We're going to lose a few degrees in temperature going through all these ceramic pipes, but it was any way I could think of to keep the stuff stored safely and out of the way. And uh, that's 200 kilos of this stuff. Done. 
you can be deconstructed, we can get rid of this tank. We're gonna be getting ready for this kiln to go down. I couldn't figure out any way to do with the kilns one on top of the other, which is what I'd normally do in, uh, if we were, you know, outside in a vacuum of space or something. So instead we had to do them side by side, which has slowed things down a little bit and made it a little bit more complicated, but I think it should work. And damn it, I really... Mm. I'm going to keep clay and coal around here. I might have to switch this over to just refined carbon near the end. It's just, uh, we need to put in a liquid pump here, and I don't think we can squeeze it in and still have storage bins for all of the resource. Oh, actually, you know what? For this round, we're going to use what we learned from the last round to be a little bit more efficient about this. From uh, checking the footage, it turns out the blob appears right here, so it drops straight down. It should land right in this tile, meaning all we have to do is keep this tile good to go, and it should... You know, you know what? Let's skip forward and see. My bet is the first time one of these buildings melted, or... Any building melted, the game crashed out. I mean, they had to, like, anticipate that people were going to overheat buildings, but actually melting buildings? i got to imagine there was some things they didn't consider. And there, we can see that blob of liquid land down. 200 kilos of steel. Beautiful. And we're going to deconstruct this and put in a liquid vent, and then we can start pumping it. Perfect. Element sensor is set to NAPTA. Uh, just I want to make sure we haven't made any mistakes here. Yep, perfect, perfect, perfect. Hook it up. For all this time and effort. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now let's hope we get exactly 400 kilos. If we get 399.999 kilos, this will not work and we'll have to melt a third one. I really don't want to have to do that. So please tell me there's been no rounding errors. Come on. 394. 400. 400 kilos precisely. Oh. Okay. That was a little bit nervous. I was thinking maybe we should have done three, but fitting three in here would have been almost impossible. Yeah, perfect. We've now got 400 kilos of steel to stick into a refinery. Now we got to stick in a metal refinery here, and I think we're going to melt out this wall. Well, the plan here is quite simple. We're going to have the refined metal... Well, semi-simple, let's just say. The refined metal wants to come out of here, or we're going to refine some metal in here. This is going to heat up the steel that's inside it, that liquid steel. That liquid steel is going to come out, and then we're going to try and run it through here. We're going to try and heat up this steel until it gets to the point that it melts. And then once it's melted, we should be able to break out here into the rest of this area, which is... Nicely radiated, and well, actually, it's nighttime right now, and we have access to light and everything, so you could literally make an entire base inside of here. Uh, but we want to be really, really careful. We don't have any uh, perfect insulators, so the best we have is ceramic. So that means we're going to need a liquid valve right here. We're going to have to restrict the flow to oh, one kilo per second. If we go above that, we're going to have problems. Then we're going to get that to there. Insulated or uh, radiant pipes, we're gonna make it a tungsten. It's the only thing that won't melt. Then we we'll try just melting all of those, I suppose. Then ceramic all the way back in. Done. So, it's <laughs> boiling hot steel comes out, tries to melt this. Anything that's left over, it's oh, it's flow control limited to one kilo per second so that it can't actually solidify in the pipes. And then it comes back in here, gets into the metal refinery, and then we decide what metal to run through it again. You see, we're going to have to control it, so we don't want the steel turning into gas, but we need the steel hot enough that it doesn't also solidify in the pipe. So we might have to be a little bit cautious here at the start, at least. Next step is transferring all of this lovely molten steel into our metal refinery. This still seems so stupid. <laughs> like, the fact that you can... You, as a coolant, you're literally using a boiling hot steel as a coolant for smelting steel. Uh, it just... Uh, Hey, it works. That's all that matters. And it is one of the most interesting mechanics in the game. Yeah, that steel is not the worst temperature. And a steel is one of the best materials for this because, well, high temperature allowance, but not just that. Uh, its evaporation point is 3,826, but its freezing point is, one th is uh, 1,083, which means you can melt it into from steel into, or from solid steel into liquid steel at 2400 degrees, but then you have to cool at 1400 degrees before it freezes again. This gives you a massive temperature range to work with. Now, we need to keep this below, oh, we need to keep it below its uh, gasification point when it's coming out, but still make sure there's plenty of heat in it when it comes back in. One second while I do a check here. This is actually fairly handy now I think about it. This is the temperature of the steel, 1660. Uh, it evaporates at 3800, so we have, you know, a lot of gap to work with. And if we check on iron to steel, which is the most heat you can put into anything, so I think it's even more than tungsten. Yeah, you can see, like, how much heat you get dumped into it down here. It gives it to you in kilojoules, but if you hover over it, it'll tell you it'll raise the temperature of the contained steel by 606 degrees, meaning this stuff will come out at about 2200 and, or 2300 degrees, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. So we are going to queue up one piece of iron to steel right now. We're going to have that rotate through here, and we're going to see what that does to the temperature of this place. Problem is, there's a lot of steel around here, so I'm not sure how many rotations this is going to take. Uh, 
And we'll make this a oof, level 8 priority. We want to make sure there's someone coming along as soon as possible. Devin. Devin. There you go, buddy. Now, let's see what happens when this pops out. Okay, we can see the steel. It's coming out at 22 something. And the problem is it's kind of stuck here and we can only let it through one kilo at a time from this point on. Just because of the way it, otherwise it'll solidify in the pipes. Oh, wow. It's cooling down a lot. Ooh. That might be too much cooling. Oh, please don't be too much cooling. Eh, we'll see. We might have to actually just run it through one time without actually... Ooh. That's going to be really cold. And I think I can remove this liquid bridge here. That is no longer necessary. All right, let's see where it goes from here. So I did a bit of rerouting here. I basically severed the line there and then uh, we rerouted it through just so that we can get a little bit more heat back in here. And you see, the temperature in here was only coming in at about 100 C and we needed it to be at least 400. If we didn't have it at least hitting 400, we wouldn't be able to pump out molten steel the other side and it would solidify in the pipes and we'd have all sorts of troubles. So, well, actually, it's a little bit hotter than I would have liked. But we're going to have to really meter this carefully or we're going to mess things up. And let's see, what's the temperature of our coolant? It's, yeah, it's not. Uh, you know what? Let's just stick through another batch of steel. Uh, yeah, another batch of steel. And we're not even going to try heating up the, the shuttle again with this. We want to get the steel nice and hot. Because when we were rotating it through here, the temperature was dropping to 100 degrees. We need the temperature of the returning steel to be at least 400 degrees. Otherwise, we're going to have to keep mis mismatching it like this. Yeah, I think we can speed this along a bit. And I think another run through might not be the worst idea in the world. Let's, uh... Let's really crank up the temperature on this stuff. In fact, I'm thinking we might just send it through a get like 2,000. We can, yeah, we can go up another notch. Give us another iron to steel there. We're gonna get it up to 2,600 before we even think about going back near those steel walls. 2,700, 26. Okay, 26. Can we do another round? Uh, actually, no. We need to do two rounds because yeah, one through one through again. No, no. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna restrict this back to one kilo a second, and uh, we're gonna just run the steel through the wall again. Right, this stuff should be coming out about, ooh, 3,200. Let's see, we got, yeah, 3,200 degree steel. That should jack the temperature in here pretty high, pretty quick. Still knocking this down to 150, that's, that's too low. Once we get down to about, a, say, 100 kilos of steel, we might just bypass and send the last 100 kilos back into the refinery just to make sure we stay above the 400 degree mark. If we go below 400, we'll never get above 1,000, which means it'll solidify in the pipes on the next run. This is going to be a lot of micromanagement in the near future. I think, for example, I'm going to have to do stuff like... Oh, that to there, that to there, and sever that line. That was actually a little bit messy. I should have been more careful there. I could have potentially ended up with one of those blobs freezing in the pipes. And then we can check here. Yeah, there we go. Much better. I was worried this stuff was going to end up too cold. So, this round, the steel should be coming out at about, ooh, 3400 C, and the actual capsule itself is looking pretty toasty at 369, so I'm pretty sure we don't have to reroute this anymore. The stuff should be coming back in at at least 400, if not a little bit more. Well, maybe not straight away, but give it a minute, give it a minute. We're dumping a lot of heat into this right now. Yep, 400 degrees, so long as we're, oh, like, we're about 450. What's the... The freezing point of steel is 1,083, and we are adding 600 degrees of temp, so oof. actually we're going to need almost 500 to be completely safe, but I think we got it. Okay, this time I think we finally cracked it. Everything is about 500 degrees in here. That's going to go through and it'll be just fine. Once we add 600 degrees to that, yeah, we can just keep running iron to steel for... Oh, you know what, let's queue up some more. It's going to take a little time. And I was thinking, once we melt this, we might want to melt this up here. Uh, reason being, we can melt that steel, and there's quite a bit of it, several hundred kilos of it. We could mop that up into little jugs, and then we could use that to fill up our refinery with two doses. I mean, do we really want to, or need to? No, but maybe we want to melt some more steel later on. It'd be nice to have, like, 800 kilos of liquid steel just lying around the place. You know, back at our base, how are we doing? Are we still scanning those seeds? I've got some seed scanning going on, and 17 leafy seeds. Yeah, I don't care about leafy seeds. I don't think anyone does. I can see why they left this bug in. It's it's painfully slow to do it this way. It's been a while since I melted anything using molten steel, and yet there's a there's an awful lot of finicky stuff. Like, 
We've got to do this at one kilo per second, which means each run is going to take 400 seconds. Which means you're spending a lot of time just mo carefully monitoring this so nothing explodes. It's really hard to do any other project at the same time. But what I am hopeful for is once we get all of this thing, I mean, the entire shuttle is heating up. Like, it's, it's 900 degrees in most parts. So, actually, yeah, it's over 1,000 degrees in here. What we want this to get above is about 1,083 degrees. Once it's above 1,083, that means all of our coolant when it passes through can go in 10 kilo blobs and it won't solidify in the pipes, which will drastically speed this up. What I've been doing is dumping the coolant in, piping it across, uh, bypassing this radiant pipe stuff, and you're sending it through in 10 kilo packets to heat it up from about 1,000 degrees to as close to 3,600 as I can get, or 38, yeah, 3,800 as I can get. Then I route it through again, so this stuff is like 3,500 degrees. And it's coming out the other side at 1,025. Oh, we won't. I think we'll have to do another batch of heating it up, pipe it through again, and then once it's finished, we'll have uh, this above 1,080 degrees. And once that happens, we can just start sending it through in 10 kilo blobs, and this will drastically speed this along. Ooh, I think we need a second. Yeah, a second batch of steel might be hand. Actually, no, I don't think it would help. A single batch of steel is actually fine for this. I was about to start running another round through, and copper is magically appearing out of nowhere. Which doesn't make sense. There's no copper around here bar that liquid valve. Uh, which... How? The liquid valve's 44 degrees. Copper, refined metal, 75 kgs. Where are you coming from? We're in vacuum! Uh, I need to find somewhere to dump that copper. Uh, Rudd. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Right, we're going to try something here. We're going to deconstruct this liquid valve. Uh, this liquid valve is made out of copper. It's the only copper thing around here. Then we're going to try and sweep this stuff up. Uh, that's a problem. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to try something stupid here. We're going to put down a smart storage bin. The smart storage bin is made of copper. Then if the co if it melts, great. If it doesn't, what we do is we uh, deconstruct it. That will lead us a blob of copper right there. And then when that copper solidifies below it, its temperatures will combine. And then it should snag it as solid copper, at least long enough for us to get it out of there. Then we can replace this with a steel liquid valve vent. I don't know exactly what caused that. It feels like it's one of those flaking mechanics that you get with gases and very hot surfaces. But there's nothing in here to actually... I don't know. It's just, I don't know where that magical copper came from. Okay, you. Deconstruct. What's your temperature right now? Uh, temperature's 45 degrees. Yeah, we're in vacuum. Nothing should happen. Perfect. Sweep. Immediately. Someone grab that. Grab it. Anyone? It's about to melt. Someone? Okay. That was mildly annoying, but it's okay. It's okay. I just always going to be problems with these things. Okay, I should have used steel. That's my bad. We'll put steel there. And I think we finally got the temperature in here high enough that we can just run 10 kilos per second through this. It'll drastically speed things along. Though I'm thinking... I'm thinking airflow tiles through here. So the thing is, this stuff's going to melt. And we're going to have 100 kilos of molten steel falling down. And I don't want it falling in this direction. So maybe some steel airflow tiles right there might uh, stop this from becoming a problem. That means any liquid steel will... Oh, I just realized something. What I want to do is get those radiant pipes. I have some radiant tungsten pipes right there as well. I'm going to need someone to be able to get in there. Okay, we finally get to see if this thing's at the thousand degrees we need. Uh, I'm not I'm not reducing the flow. Yeah, that's actually going down below a thousand degrees. You can see it's an out at, what, 1034. Good thing we didn't set that to 10 kgs or we would have lost some steel and then we would never be able to keep this running. Okay, right, so... It stays a little bit cooler for a little bit longer. That's fine. We can, we can do another ro few rotations through here at minimum speed. We're going to crank that up to 10 kilos per second. That should make things a little bit faster. Oh, finally. This was just taking forever to melt. Now, now we can melt this at higher speeds. Oh, being able to do it at 10 kilos per second means we can get this oh, the whole thing through in 40 seconds once the actual refinement is done, as opposed to 400 seconds. Oh, beautiful. All right, give us another few minutes and I'll cut back in just when we're about ready to melt this stuff. We have run out of lime. Um, yep. All the lime's gone. Despite strip mining the entire oil biome before we started and, uh, 
Yeah, I must have left steel running, but we've made five tons of steel here, 5.3 tons, and we're very close. We're almost up to that 2400 mark. Or sorry, 2440 degrees or something like that is where it starts melting. So we're just gonna have to melt iron. I've even queued up a little bit of fossil to be harvested from... Oh, that uh, that fossil thingy that we, we trade one kilo of diamond for 100 kilos of fossil. I'm willing to make that trade right now because I want more steel so I can finish this melting. Oh my god, I'm kind of sad I left this one below ground. This one was meant to be just a sample, and then, you know, if we want to do the other one, we could do it on the... If we wanted to do a, a larger rocket later, we could on top, but, uh... Oh god, considering the amount of time this has taken, I should have just done this up top, shouldn't I? I think we're there. We're just about there. Could only take a couple more loads, maybe? We've also got enough lime now to start running seal again. There it goes! Yes! Okay, so this is steel, 75 kilos worth of... And there's a second one! And a third one, and a fourth one, and... You don't need to be going anymore. And a fifth one. It's finished. We've managed to break in. Oh. Yeah, that took way too long. I uh, have. This is, yeah, is going to be anticlimactic. This is a huge waste of time in a lot of sense. But you know what? Don't care. Wanted to do it. Have done it. Hey, you, Billings. Let's deconstruct down to there. We're going to build our way up here. And we're going to build ourselves an internal underground solar power plant. Because... We want to. Not because it's a good idea, but because we wanted to do it. Now that we have broken free of the confines of the ship, we can go up here and put in some solar panels. Uh, it's actually nighttime right now, so there's no sun. Also, this planet's not great for solar output. We check here. Actually, wait. Check here. We can see we got about 40,000 lux. You can also check under here to see what vents and geysers you have, but nah, it's not the same. Oh, and we can see we get copper meteor showers, icy meteor showers, and slimy meteor showers. Mentions nothing about regolith, which we also get, so I don't know how accurate that is. Let's, uh, let's put in a few solar panels here. We're going to get four indoor solar panels for all of our effort. Perfectly reasonable return on investment. Perfect. Indoor power is now being generated. Wait a minute, what's the... Oh my god. God, there's 70,000 lumens out here? Okay, that means I've arranged the solar panels all wrong. We should have staggered a, a sort of a pyramid formation to make this work right. Ugh, damn it. I'm going to have to rejig this whole thing then. Well, not just this minute, but... Yeah, what, that much? Available? Why is that not... No power consumers? How can you have no power consumers? All the power goes out this thing. All right, so I did a little bit of back and forth, and I think the problem here is the power wires it went. We can get power out of this, so it's not a complete waste of time. So I need to somehow stop this from overheating. I dropped a piece of lead down here earlier. It hit this uh, metal tile, and this piece of lead overheated everything. Yeah, someone decided to take a nap when they were supposed to be building a power wire. It, it uh, Narcoleptics, you know what I mean? Oh, and you deconstruct that. Oh, and you can deconstruct that as well. I was doing some other testing with other things. Yeah, there's no need anymore. At least we know we can get the power out. It's just a case of figuring out where it's supposed to go. Uh, yeah, that solar panel is going to overheat. But if we deconstruct it, you know what? We will. Disable auto repair. Well, behold solar power. Indoors and downstairs. Um, completely not worth the time and effort investment. Well, okay. Let me rephrase. This was really hard to do first time around, right? I can see several ways to speed this up and make this so much faster next time around, so this was a learning experience. However, what we want to do now is, well, what I want to do, a little thing is, I want to melt this stuff. We have a whole bunch more steel down here, like there is stuff at 1700 degrees. I think some of it got cooled down because, well, we dropped some lead and stuff here and there, so we're going to have to maybe crank up a few more pieces, but I figure we got 375 kilos of lime. Give me 10 more pieces of steel here. What's this at? Uh, 2,600 degrees. Perfect. Pop it through there. Start ripping this down. That would all melt. It should fall down here. And there's drywall back here made of obsidian, which should not melt. Which means the steel should fall down and then stay there? Actually, will it exchange heat with the drywall is the question. If it does... Oh. That might be a problem. Hmm. Uh... What just happened? Uh, that was ceramic. What happened to ceramic? Did it just vanish? Uh, give me liquids. Magma. Okay, whatever that was melted. Fine, someone mopped that up. What's the temperature down here? Ooh. 
the drywall does take on the temperature. That could be a problem. Uh, guys, someone wanna... Okay. Oh, wow. Whatever's going on there, the ceramic is just, like, exchanging temperature like crazy. Yeah, I think the ceramic's about to melt again. Okay, fine. If we can't... Uh... We will make an insulated liquid pipe out of tungsten. I am not sure that's a real thing that can happen, but that's what we are going to do. And, well, yeah, we got more magma in here. God damn it. Fine. We'll, we'll mop up the magma, but then... Oh, and how is there magma there? Oh, there was a pipe in there also. Okay, fine. So it turns out you can't put ceramic inside these gas or liquid things. Otherwise, the heat gets transferred too quickly and they just sort of incinerate themselves. Okay, then. That worked out terribly. Uh, give me a few minutes while we let this run around a few times more. Well, that went horribly wrong. Turns out the uh, when this pipe melted, it took 10 kilos of steel with it. So while we've got magma down here in, in plentiful supply, up here we've got 380 kilos of steel, meaning we can't run another batch through. <sighs> Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna have to go melt some more steel. I think I'll use an aqua tuner this time, but uh, that, that's complicated. Instead, I want to do one last quick test. I thought we'd try something because I'm sure there's a faster way of doing it, and I think I have a quick idea on how to do that. Just uh, give me one minute here while we put together a quick rocket for testing purposes. When it comes to breaking these things open, this is definitely a slow method. It's, it requires a lot of ma micromanagement, can be done, and you can do it quite cleanly. However, I figure if we want to be messy, why don't we just nuke it? It might be possible. Let's see, let's get a tiny blob of water. We're gonna get one blob of water here. We've only got two kilos of uranium. Might not be enough. Uh, that's gonna go in there. Will the reactor turn on? No. Why, why, why won't you? Insufficient resources enriched uranium. After a bit of fiddling around, it turns out it just needed more water. My bad. All right, we got about 18 kgs of water in there, two kgs of uranium. Now we just need the uranium to get really, really, really hot. I think it's uh, 2,400 degrees or something like that, and then the whole thing should pop. Hmm, we might have put in too much water for that. It doesn't matter, that water will get expelled, and once the water is expelled, this thing should pop, and when it does, hopefully it blasts a hole in the wall. Oh, beautiful. It's out of water. So what we needed was 30 kilos of water, wait until that's done, and... Oh! Well... Well, it was worth a try. But what are you doing? Story... Did you just deliver... Disable auto repair on that. Just, just leave. Just leave. There's no need for... No! 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 So let's just, just disable auto repair on all of this. Uh, <laughs> this place is uh, incredibly radioactive. In fact, all of you have been exposed to just ridiculous amounts of rads. Just, um, no, get out, all of you. Oh my god. Jesus. Disable auto repair. What's the radiation like in here? Well, 18,000 18, rads, 22,000. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, you know what? Perfectly fine. Worth the try. Worth the try. Ah, uh, pity. I mean, if we didn't try it, we wouldn't have known it didn't work. I, I just assumed that, you know, the research reactors can damage all the tiles around them. Maybe they damage the rocket walls. Yeah, never mind. We can, me we can melt another rocket. It's fine. No, and of course, I turned off the carbon skimmer for ages, and I almost suffocated my dupes, because of course I did. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll suck all the carbon dioxide out, and we'll get this place back to normal in no time. For now, I'm going to cut this out here. I think next up, it's going to be exploring other planets. We've got... Actually, it's the last... Yeah, we were on the last research. We have literally knocked out all of the researches now. While we were busy doing all of that steel smelting in the background, I, I queued up all the research. This is the last one. Once this is done, we're finished with all the research and we can start exploration of the other planets. Now, question. Would you like me to explore the other planets in a rocket where we've burned out the walls so that we can, you know, build a giant mobile base? Or just do it traditionally? Eh. We'll see what the comments say or where everyone leans. But in the background, I'm definitely going to have to melt the walls of one just in case people decide to go that way because this takes a while. Just, just like, just, just, just a scooch of time. I think I have a few ways to speed that up. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck.